Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I'm going to be talking about two of the most powerful assault rifles available in Battlefield Hardline. One for the criminals, one for the cops. And we'll be talking about which one is potentially the best. This is the M16A3 and the M416. The M16A3 is available for the cops. Now seeing the return of the fully automatic M16 in a Battlefield game is music to my ears. You guys might know how much I love this gun from Battlefield 3. It was just such a good, versatile weapon, great in all situations and now it's back in Battlefield Hardline and it's very very similar to its old-school Battlefield 3 counterpart. That being said it's not quite as powerful as the one from Battlefield 3 and that's pretty much a good thing because the one in BF3 was just too darn good in my opinion. This one is still incredibly good and it definitely outclasses most other weapons you're gonna run into. It's retaining its 800 round per minute rate of fire but instead of having a 25 damage maximum they've upped it to 28 damage maximum per shot and that drop off doesn't start till around 40 meters so at up to around 45 meters you can still four shot kill somebody which is kind of unheard of with assault rifles in any battlefield game to date. Now combining this massive damage per second output with an extended magazine of 35 and you have the ability to go through three opponents potentially four opponents easy with one magazine. Now to try and better balance out this assault rifle the reload times have been increased from previous battlefield games it has a 2.38 second short reload reload and a 2.72 second long reload. This is significantly longer than any previous Battlefield game and it is a good balancing factor. You definitely have to make sure you're behind a little bit of cover before you start that reload process. Also make sure that you're aware of how many bullets you have in your magazine. It's often beneficial to try and check your surroundings before going for that reload as opposed to that instinctive reload after getting a kill. Now the M16 A3 costs $37,500 in game. It's certainly not cheap but it's well worth it if you like playing the operator class. It is one of the best assault rifles you can get for the cops right off the bat. Now of course it's going to perform well stock before you put any attachments on there, but I would recommend getting the Cobra sight or the Comp M4 sight uh, when you get the sights available. And then I modified it with the heavy barrel and I initially used the uh, vertical grip, but I ended up switching over to the stubby grip at the end as I felt it sort of controlled my recoil a little bit better and allowed me to focus fire on long distance targets a little bit better and that is really one of the benefits of having assault rifles is awesome accuracy and damage at medium to even longer range engagements. At the end of the barrel I just put a flash hider on there to try and conceal my visual signature a bit more. You could put a suppressor on there if you're having trouble with the recoil you could always put a muzzle brake or something on there. I feel like you shouldn't really need it with this gun though if you have trouble controlling the recoil on the M16A3 then you probably just need to practice your recoil control. Now once again this rifle fulfills that extremely versatile role. I can pick any game mode, any map, any scenario, and the M16A3 is going to do just fine regardless of what I pick. Now, in close quarters, I would say PDWs, or at least some of the more powerful PDWs, can out damage this weapon. There aren't a lot though, and so I would say that's one of the only areas that this gun is just not king of the hill, is extreme close quarters. PDW still kind of reign supreme there, and shotguns do as well. At medium range though, the M16A3 really does feel like champion. Longer range too, it's still very effective, although you might start losing out to some of the DMRs or bolt action sniper rifles available to the professional class. The M16 also has the fastest muzzle velocity out of of any assault rifle or carbine available. This means it's gonna be very easy to shoot moving targets at a distance. You're not really gonna to have to lead. You just aim directly at them, pull the trigger, and you should be getting hits. Now, if you're used to the glory days of the M16A3 from Battlefield 3, the main things you're gonna to wanna to adapt to with the new school M16A3 are the fact that it has slightly higher recoil, it also has a slightly higher first shot recoil, so there's gonna be a little bit more kick to the gun. It doesn't take too much practice to get used to this, but uh, it does also have that significantly longer reload, which is going to reduce its effectiveness for close quarter, just crazy chaotic combat. So you gotta get used to that as well. Now let's talk about the M416 making a try triumphant return on the criminal side in Battlefield Hardline. This is quite honestly one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful assault rifle in the game, and rightfully slow. The M416 or the HK416 in real life is a very high-tech rifle, and a lot of militaries around the world are adapting it into their use. Now one of the best upgrades this assault rifle has seen in Battlefield Hardline is an upgrade to its rate of fire. It used to shoot 750 rounds per minute, 
both in Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. It now shoots 850 rounds per minute, outclassing the M16A3 in terms of damage per second. It also has a faster reload than the M16A3, not by much, but a significant margin, 2.21 seconds for the short reload and 2.6 seconds for the long reload. Its recoil per shot is practically identical to the M16A3, except that it has significantly lesser first shot recoil multiplier, meaning you're not gonna get quite as much of a jolt when you shoot this gun for the first time. It's gonna be easier to stay on target. The muzzle velocity is a little bit slower than the M16A3 at 600 meters per second, only 50 meters per second slower, and that's really not gonna make a huge difference in the long run. So the M416 outclasses the M16A3 in both reload speed, recoil, and rate of fire. So in my opinion, the M416 is the clear victor between the two assault rifles, but it's not to say that the M16A3 is not a good weapon, and it might even be the weapon that you personally prefer. Now, of course, the purchase price for this gun is significantly more than the $37,500 of the M16. This one cost $50,000 right off the bat. That's extremely expensive for any gun in this game, so if you're going to get it, make sure you want to play the Operator class a lot. Now, if you're strapped for cash, you can always go and play some Hotwire, which is one of the easiest ways to make money in this game. You don't even really have to have too much skill. If you get into a car uh, with somebody or you drive a car around, you'll just be getting points by the minute. You'll watch your wallet size grow, and pretty soon you'll have that $50,000 to get this gun. Shouldn't take you more than three games or so. Now, because the M416 is very similar to the M16A3 in many ways, I would recommend getting both of them, and then you can just switch between the two guns when you switch factions, since it's going to take you 1,250 kills to unlock the weapon license with this gun. You're going to need to use something else when you're playing on the cop side. As for attachments, I would recommend the heavy barrel and stubby grip or the heavy barrel and vertical grip. Both of those work. I would opt for the vertical grip if you like to move around and shoot at the same time, and the stubby grip if you like to stand still and shoot. Again, you shouldn't really need any sort of barrel attachment to compensate for your recoil. The recoil on the M416 is fairly negligible, so you can pretty much just put a flash header on there or a suppressor if you want to be a little bit more stealthy. As for optics, the Comp M4 is a good cheap red dot sight, and if you want to spend a little bit more, you can go for the Cobra. Of course, if you're trying to replicate some of those cool Navy SEAL loadouts, you can always put the hollow sight on here, which is also known as the EOTech. Now, it should also be noted that the AKM is a strong contender for the ultimate gun in Battlefield Hardline. However, it does require a little bit more skill to use, and the M416 and M16A3 are just guns that are going to be amazingly easy to use and amazingly good no matter whose hands they are in. The AKM, again, can be a very, very lethal platform. It just requires a little bit higher of a learning curve to be good with it. I will be making a video covering the AKM extensively and talking about how to outfit that gun and how to use it so you can be most effective, but as far as the best assault rifles in the game go, I would definitely say M16A3 and M416 are top of their game. Now so far I've gotten the silver camo unlocked for both of these weapons which requires a minimum 250 kills apiece. And then if you want to get the gold camo, you're going to need 1,000 kills. Beyond that, if you get a 1,250 kills, you'll get the weapon license allowing you to use these weapons for either faction. So if you are one of those players that likes to stick with one gun and one gun alone and get extremely good with that, you will be able to do that. You just got to put in the time with the weapons and get your 1,250 kills. In the meantime, I'd recommend switching back and forth between the M16A3 and M416 if you want some extremely good platforms for the operator class. Now I personally have to rate the M416 higher than the M16A3 simply because of that rate of fire and the fact that I find the recoil control a little bit easier. Not by much, but a tiny bit easier on the M416. So you've got a weapon platform that is dishing out massive, massive damage. It can handle itself in close quarters, medium range, and long range. There's really nothing that the M416 can't do. So I hope you guys found this weapon review useful and even though it is fun to sometimes just stick with one gun and master it, I recommend trying out all the guns in the game and trying to vary it up as much as possible. There's a lot of really cool alternatives out there. So as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.